So, you're a big fan of the Triplanner tool. Do you know that you can convert any mesh to a Triplanner projection and gain further control? Using this tool, you'll be able to sculpt complex geometry in no time. And this is an example of what you can do. Meet the org. Now let's jump into the tutorial. In here, I am looking at a sphere. First of all, you need to keep in mind that the Triplanner tool would try to calculate the shape or the mesh you have and project it into three surfaces, meaning, or three planes, meaning that you might not be able to preserve the details in all shapes. And an example of this would be a sphere. However, it is workable and doable to do other shapes and today's tutorial will focus on these shapes. Let's start with removing the sphere as we usually do. Let's add an icosahedron and this is a complex geometry if you look into it. However, once we change this using the Triplanner tool, you will find that some of the details will be lost. That's something we can't work with because simply three parallel projections are not enough to show you complex geometry. I will validate it and now we'll move into the topology and I'll introduce to you where you can find the Triplanner tool. So if you scroll all the way down in your topology, you would find the Triplanner tool and it's similar to when we start with drawing a Triplanner tool, we need to decide the resolution. I have put here 300, which is the sweet spot I could found and experiment with. You can experiment with different resolution. By the way, if you're still unsure about what the Triplanner tool is, make sure to watch one of my previous videos, which is focusing on this tool. Click on convert. And what will happen now is that you can see we now have that shape rebuilt using these three planes some details have been lost but what i would need to do for this tutorial is enough for me here now in looking into the front i would keep or stay in the front i usually when it comes to shading i like to stay in the matte cap and because in here it's the geometry is not impacted by the actual lights of the scene now if you have these three planes, what you need to do is to add details by redrawing or removing some of the existing masks. And we will make use of this by simply clicking on the cell mask that is available in here. In the cell mask, you would have the polygon, the line, rectangle and ellipse. For this specific tutorial, I will use the polygon. Just make sure that the symmetry is on and we are setting it to unmask. And the reason is because we need to deduct from the geometry that is in here. Also, I want to make sure that the symmetry for my word is on X in the front parallel projection. Now, to start drawing with polygon, you need at least three points. Once you have done that, you can see that these are automatically changed to be curved or busier. To get them back to be sharp, just click on each of these points and now you have them sharp. What I would like to do is again to deduct some of these meshes. To add a point between any two points, you just click in between and drag as you have seen me doing. Once that's all in place, I can click on the green circle. And because symmetry is on and the symmetry is set to be on X, it is working perfectly for front. Now let's move into the left and I'll do exactly the same, but I, know I need to change the symmetry to be Y. In here, I am on polygon. I just want to, want to make sure that the symmetry is on and the unmask is on as well. So click, 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 click. You can, by the way, add your click and then change them later to be sharp edges. I'm happy with this shape. It's a matter of trial and error and what you think is working better for you. Now moving into the top, I have now my top. Again, I am still in the parallel projection. What I would need to do changing the symmetry to be Z in this situation. 
and I am in polygon, symmetry, unmask, and then click, 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 change these back to B sharp, and then click and click. So plenty of clicking in here and a little bit of adjustment to make sure that all of these looks good. Once you have done this and clicked on the green circle, you would end up with this shape. As I've mentioned before, we set the resolution because you would end up with something like this jagged line. We will deal with this in a moment. But before, if you look into this skeleton, you would find that there's an unwanted object in the middle. And don't worry, we can remove this easily. And the, uh, the way to do it is by separating this mesh. And the separating work only if there is no kind of touch between geometry. So if you, for example, have two hands and you want to remove one, you can just simply separate them. Now, how to do separate? While you have selected the mesh, if you go to your scene under the selected mesh, you have separate. Once you've clicked on that, what you would see is that now I have two meshes in my scene. One of them is this small cube in the middle. I don't want that. So simply what I need to do is to delete it. Once you're happy with your shape, I would always like to go and smooth it a little bit. I'm using the smooth tool here. Uh, you could also check the wire frame if you would like to. For me, I don't need to do so. I just want to smooth it and I want to bring the symmetry back to be X. And in here, I'll just move my brush around, just making sure that those jaggered are taken care of. Sometimes the jaggering is something you cannot somehow go around, but always it helps if your display render resolution is higher as you can see in here. Now what I'll do again is I'll just simply smooth some of these angles. You can spend as much time as you want in here. You can add further detail, but again, for today's tutorial, that would be it. Now what I would like to do is I have the shape. I want to clone it. And once clone is on, I can simply scale it up and that would clone it. I just want to rotate it randomly and then clone it again and scale it up and rotate it randomly. So there is a kind of random pattern in here. Now it's time to get these a little bit of color, but before I need to get out of my current shading to be PBR, and I'm using this environment, which you can uh, find. I think it is a standard environment in Nomad Sculpt. In here, I have my three meshes, and I just want to make sure that I'm painting them correctly. So if I go to paint in here for the one in the middle, I would like this to be silver. Well, actually, let's make the one on or, uh, the bigger one silver. Uh, for the one in here, I would like this to be um, blue. And for the one which is inside, I would like this to be a little bit of a gold. And now we have these three different orbs in place. Now simply it's a matter of you working your scene and making sure that all the objects you have is in there. Uh, for the demonstration I just add a small plan in here and this plane would be something of a reflective material. So I could take for example this blue and paint it, take all the way the roughness down and keep the metallic and change this into a perspective and once I am in the perspective you can simply in this situation uh, play with post processing by turning it on and make sure it is max sample for resolution and I would like some reflection to show and a little bit of ambient and probably a depth of field you can also play with bloom if you would like to and this would be it for today's video. I could remove the bloom just to make it faster. And you have your complex orb in a very straightforward process in less than 10 minutes that is now ready 
to be added to your other object and you can work your details around it and even make it smoother. This is today's tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've liked this tutorial, please consider leaving a like, subscribe to this channel and write me a nice comment. I like to hearing from you. That's it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.